Hello everyone and welcome to another Middle Game episode with Coach B and MasterChess.com. This is the second part of the video looking at the isolated pawn in the pawn structure series. If you haven't watched the first part, I encourage you to watch that first and then look at this video. In this video, we're going to take a look at three Grandmaster games to see how they apply the strategies we've talked about in the first video. So let's get started. This first game was played in 2006 by Alexander Fishbein, who was rated 25-19, versus Yuri Shulman, who was rated 25-81. And I'm going to fast forward and stop at the critical moves where I'm going to comment. And this is the position that was reached after 15 moves, which is a very common position in the Tarash variation of the French defense. Here, black accepts an isolated d pawn, but gets free and easy play for his pieces. As you will see, white will follow our anti-isolated pawn formula and trade as many minor pieces as possible. From here, the game continued with bishop takes g6, and then h takes g6, so one bishop is gone. After this, the game continued with queen to d3, rook a to d8, knight b to d4, a6, then knight takes c6, and knight takes c6. So there's another minor that's gone. Coming back, I do want to mention that here black cannot take the knight with the b pawn, as white will be able to win an extra pawn with queen takes on a6. So coming back, knight takes c6 was played. And then the king continued with bishop to g5, bishop e7, bishop takes e7, and rook takes e7. And there goes another minor. And the game continued with rook takes e7, queen takes e7, rook e1, queen f6. And here white played h4, which was a slip. A better move here would have been rook to d1, which would prevent the advance of the d-pawn, which is a critical part in our strategy. White would retain his slight but long-term advantage in this case. However, in the game h4 was played. The game continued with queen to f5. Coming back, a better reply for black would have been moving the pawn to d4, where he would get rid of his weakness. After this, after pawn takes c4, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, and rook takes d4, this game would have been equalized and black is in very good shape. However, coming back, black played queen to f5 from which white replied queen to e3, then queen to d7, preventing queen to e8 check, where white would have gained a winning advantage. Let's actually go back and look at that variation. Let's say here black would have played something like b5. Well, after queen to e8 check, rook takes e8, rook takes e8 check, king to h7, and knight to g5. If the black king moves to h6, rook to h8 is checkmate. Therefore, the queen will have to take the knight on g5, and after the pawn takes the queen, white is up in exchange with the winning game. So coming back, black replied queen to d7, which was the correct move. And the game continued with rook to d1. Following our strategy, which we've talked about in the first video, then black replied with f6, pawn to g3, king to f7, and then white played the move king to g2. White has improved the position of his king, which is now off the back rank, and keeps an eye on the slightly loose light squares on f3 and h3. The game continued with queen to e6, queen to b6, rook to d7, rook to e1, queen to d6, knight to d4, offering to exchange the final minor piece and reach the ideal position we've talked about in our first video. And now black is faced with a big dilemma. If he trades the knight, he will allow white to have the favorable position against an isolated pawn. But if he doesn't trade, the knight on d4 is going to be very strong and it's going to be much superior to his knight. In the game, black here replied with knight to e5, choosing to keep the knight, from which white responded with queen to b3. Not trading queens, as the queen is a key piece in fighting against the isolated pawn. If the queens would trade, Black's king would be able to come and support the isolated pawn. And the game continued with knight to c6. Here definitely white doesn't want to take the knight on c6 
as the B pawn would be able to come and defend the isolated pawn, which would not be an isolated pawn anymore. So he plays the correct move, rook to d1, from which black responds with knight to e5. Coming back, he doesn't want to take the knight on d4, which would give white the advantage. After rook takes d4, queen to c6, and queen to d1, we have the desired position that we've talked about in our first video. So coming back, knight to e5 was played. And the game continued with queen to c2, from which black responded with rook to d8. H5. From which black responded with g takes h5. Coming back, I do want to mention that moving the pawn to g5, it's not a good move because after queen to h7, queen to f8, f4, g takes f4, g takes f4, knight to c6, queen to g6, king to g8, and knight to e6, white has a winning advantage. So coming back, g takes h5 was played. And the game continued with queen to h7, queen to f8, queen takes h5, check. Knight to g6, rook to e1, queen to h8, queen to g4, rook to d6, knight to f5, attacking the rook, rook to b6, and another excellent move, knight to h6, check, taking advantage of the undefended black's rook, from which black reply with queen takes h6. Coming back, I do want to mention that g takes h6 is not possible due to queen to d7, check. After king to g8, queen to d8 check, white will be able to pick up the rook on b6. So coming back, queen takes h6 was the correct reply. To which white reply with queen to d7 check. And from here, I'm just going to fast forward to the end of the game so you could see how white ended up winning this game. And here black resigned. This next position was reached after 16 moves in a game played in India in 2003 by Chanda Sandipan rated 2501 versus Hampi Koneru versus 2485. As we mentioned in the first video it's usually ideal to keep a queens in the game along with the rook but there are many occasions when exchanging the queens is totally fine and the owner of the isolated pawn Will still not have an easy life. So let's take a look at this game. In this position it's white to move and if we look at this position we can notice that black has an isolated pawn on d6 and also most of his pieces are not very active. The most active piece he has is the queen on b6. Therefore white makes the move queen to b4 to go and trade the queens. Black responded with rook takes e1 check. Rook takes e1 and then knight to d5, from which white captured on b6, black takes back with the knight, and then white makes the excellent move pawn to b3, which takes away the a4 and c4 squares away from black's knight, while also preparing a3 to a4, turning the a pawn into an active participant in the battle. The game continued with d5, a4, bishop to b4, rook to d1, g6, bishop to f4, king to f8, knight to e2. And here white's plan is very simple but very effective. He intends to follow up with bishop to e3, eyeing black's knight, and if that knight moves, he's going to put pressure on a7. And after that, he's going to follow up with knight to f4, where he's going to start putting pressure on the isolated d5 pawn. So the game continued here with bishop to e6, bishop to e3, knight to c8, knight to f4, knight to e7, and another great move, pawn to c4. Coming back, more usual in this kind of position would be moving the bishop to e2, then to f3, intensifying the pressure against d5. However, this proves to be unnecessary, since pawn to c4 makes use of some tactical elements that will gain material by force. Here, black responded with rook to d8, Coming back, if black responds here with d takes c4, after knight takes e6 check, f takes e6, bishop takes c4, king to f7 guarding the pawn, rook to d7, white is putting pressure on b7, and if that pawn moves to b6, after bishop to e2, the bishop will come to f3, 
tar targeting the rook on a8, and after that rook moves, the pawn on a7 will fall to the white's rook. So coming back, black replied with rook to d8, and the game continued with bishop to e4, bishop to d6, knight takes d5, and black's isolated pawn has fallen. And from here, I'm just going to fast forward to the continuation of the game so you can see how white ended up winning this game. And here black resigned as he cannot capture white's bishop since after rook to d1 check, he's going to lose the rook as well. Being down a piece, there was no point of continuing. So far, we've only looked at isolated d pawns but our anti-isolated d-pawn rules also apply to other types of isolated pawns as we will see in this next game. This position was reached after 20 moves in a game played by Rustam Kasidim Hanov rated 2687 versus Francisco Vallejo Pons rated 2701. Here it's white to move and white trades the knight taking on d7 from which black replied queen takes d7, queen to c2, then rook a to b8. Coming back a little bit better would have been to move the rook from f to b8, just because it wasn't very wise to leave the a6 pawn unattended. However, coming back rook a to b8 was played, from which white replied queen to c4, immediately taking aim at black's a pawn. Black responds with a5, then queen to c5. He's not giving the poor a5 pawn a break. Queen to c7, and then rook to b5, an excellent move. Here, black cannot capture the rook on b5 as his queen will fall, and if he captures the rook with the rook, after a takes b5, queen to d6, queen takes d6, e takes d6, and b takes c6, after d5, white has a protected pass pawn with the winning advantage. So coming back after rook to b5, black replied with rook to a8, and the game continued with queen to c3, rook f to c8, rook to c5, e6, then rook to c1. And now black who is tied down to defend both a5 and c6 is completely helpless. The game continued with rook to a6, h4. Since black can only sit around passively and hope his opponent doesn't find a breakthrough, white is slowly improving his game before starting to put pressure on black's weaknesses. From here, the game continued with h5, rook to b1, rook a to a8, g3, rook to a6, king to g2. Since white has endless time here, he's creating the optimal king safety position before proceeding with an attack. After this, the game continued with queen to a7, and another excellent move, rook b to b5. From here, black continued with king to h7, rook takes a5, rook takes a5, rook takes a5, queen to b7, and after rook to c5, white has an extra pawn and still reigns heavy pressure on c6. So I'm just going to fast forward to the rest of the game so you can see how white ended up winning this game. And here black resigned. If he tries to defend the pawn on c4 with the rook, then the a pawn will march. And after losing the pawn on c4, white is up two pawns and the winning should be very easy. Alright, thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for more lessons. If you liked my video, please subscribe and don't forget to check out my new website, MasterYourChess.com, where you can learn, practice, test and master your chess knowledge.